Good news, everyone. After a week from hell, the vets discovered what was wrong with Panda, and after some surgery, he is now recovering and he's getting much better. So thank you all for all your messages of best wishes and also towards the vets for their awesome job. In not so important news, at least for me, but still very important for sim racing, Fanatec is finally being acquired by Corsair. And from this point onwards, it can go multiple ways, but I think it's going to go one specific way. I'm going to start this video by saying that I am a Fanatec affiliate and I've worked in the past with Corsair via Elgato. Here's the news. The news have been reported by EQS. Corsair has acquired the business operations of Vendor AG as part of an asset deal. The shares in the foreign subsidiaries will also be transferred. Additionally, Corsair will take over all active employment contracts of Vendor AG. Indoor AG will be fully liquidated as part of the insolvency proceedings and its stock marketing listing will be terminated shortly. Shareholders should expect not to receive any payments. The company's estate remains up for sale. So essentially, what does it mean? It means that Fanatec now is under the wing of Corsair. Uh, Indoor AG is, is going to be liquidated as part as, like I say, the, the asset deal, which likely means or very likely means that anything that is the headquarters that was going to be built that is going to be up for sale you know to get out of get rid of the debt and also that the shareholders including thomas yekermai and whoever else was holding the the shares uh they are going to be left with nothing so what does this mean well essentially corsair bought endor they want the business operations of endor to get rid of basically all of it and keep fanatec for themselves bringing them up to their wing. That means that every single debt will need to be liquidated and they will use uh, Endor's assets to do so. That will mean uh, likely getting rid of the HQ that was basically dragging uh, Fanatec through the mud. And with 100 million in debt, that's basically a lot. Uh, they want to keep everything that is Fanatec in terms of uh, IPs, in terms of properties, in terms of future products, current products. And they also want to get rid of the shareholders altogether. So what do I think it's going to happen? Well, as a self-appointed expert in all matters related to this, I'm going to give you something that is 100% correct and it's going to happen. I'm kidding about this. I'm not an expert on this, but we can take, you know, have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in the future, more or less by looking at the German company that was acquired by Corsair in the past, which is Elgato and not Fanatec. And Elgato started as a company that did uh, demotic or home uh, automation and also streaming uh, things, streaming cards in the past. I bought a few of them in the past as well, one of the HD60s years and years ago. And they were acquired by Corsair and they weren't integrated into IQ at all. You know, Corsair said to them, do what you do best. And from that point onwards, they built the Stream Deck, they built the Stream Deck Plus, a lot of capture cards that keep getting better and better. You know, a lot of stuff that is related to streaming, but with the Stream Deck, for example, it doesn't need to be streaming because this thing is really powerful. Corsair saying to Fanatec, do what you do best, and of course, try to get some money out of it, is what I think it's going to happen to Fanatec. If Fanatec will likely will have the same message, but I think that Corsair will have a look from a top-down perspective and look at their lineup of uh, wheels and wheelbases and pedals and see, look, you have something that's not working, it's not making enough money, this relationship is not working, you have multiples of the same one, or you need to improve this, why is this lacking? And I think, in my opinion, that Corsair will help with the R&D uh, push, bringing new stuff in. And I don't think that Fanatec as a name will disappear at all because it doesn't make any sense for Fanatec as a name disappear because Fanatec as a name is really recognizable in the sim racing sphere, even though it does have a, a bad reputation right now, a bad reputation that they actually deserve. And even so it's the case, uh, having the name is really important because if you get rid of the Fanatec name and just slap it in the side, you know, Corsair Gaming or Corsair Sim Racing, it won't make any sense at all because nobody will know about it. But Fanatec is already established and with an established name, you can actually try to recuperate the issues they had. And Fanatec does have good hardware and Fanatec does have good relationships. So I think we're going to see that the new products are coming in faster rather than just being dripped every so often. And, you know, you have 
pieces of equipment that are seven, eight years old and then are still being sold. Uh, I think there is going to be a restructuring of the products and they'll have a different product cycle as well. And I think because, you know, looking at Elgato, looking at the Corsair, I think the customer support is also going to improve a lot. But that is not going to be seen in the next three or four months. That's going to probably take a little more than that. So another thing that I think it's going to happen with Fanatec as well is that they're going to get away from the online store only uh, exclusive sales and they're going to open up a little more like Asatec or Matza where they sell also in selected stores like Micro Center. That would help a lot uh, people trying to get their hands on it and likely even go towards other countries where uh, they don't really have a store and they have to order from, for example, the United States like it happens in Canada as well and that uh, increases the price. So therefore, you, you can have less of exclusivity and they'll probably have a bigger base to buy uh, these wheelbases or, you know, adding other product from Fanatec. The last point I want to raise is that I think Fanatec won't be able to sit on their old ways of thinking that they are number one in sim racing, even though I still think they are number one in terms of uh, revenue or in terms of number of sales least for the mid and high end, because the world has changed. And of course, they are on their back foot. And essentially, they are in a situation where uh, their reputation is basically through the toilet. One thing that I hope that Corsair does, and this is also my opinion, is that uh, in my opinion, you're welcome to disagree, is that there needs to be a reshuffle on the boards. Fanatex problems have been starting three, two and a half years ago. Uh, start to become worse one and a half year ago with the issues of having stock, you know, but people not receiving their products. And this is something that wasn't resolved as fast as possible. And it just dragged on over a year to the point that it completely ruptured the company from A to B. And this is not just one single point of failure. It's multiple points of failure especially towards the board. And I believe they have a lot of responsibilities. I don't think they can hold their positions not to have the same sort of results on the long term, especially with this uh, new management in place. Hopefully for me, this is the end of the saga. I don't want to do any more videos about this unless it's good news because, you know, might as well do a stuff about good news like new launches or new products, or, you know, increasing customer support in Fanatec or Logitech or Trustmas or whatever, because there are plenty of good stuff coming about in sim racing, and this is just a blemish on sim racing altogether. And the next time I want to hear about Fanatec is about good stuff, and I hope that happens a lot. But let us know in the comments what you think about this, and I'll see you next time.